Everett is over a week old and I have been wanting to record his birth story this whole week and it just hasn't happened but um, I had planned to kind of film the birth but it happened so suddenly and so fast that there was no picking up a camera I mean it was just I don't I don't know that I would have wanted to see it anyway <laughs> in hindsight but um, we did film some a few clips before and after the birth so I will share those with you so um, Tuesday night we went to our monthly chiropractor visit and I actually went in with anticipation hopeful that our chiropractor would be able to do adjustments to get things going and sure enough that night I was woken up with contractions about 1 30 a.m. I kept having contractions they weren't like super intense and I do have like laboring contractions it feels like for the last couple weeks so I have had con I had have I had had contractions on and off for like a couple weeks so it wasn't totally alarming I didn't wake him or anything but what I did notice that was really different is that in between my contractions there was a lot of movement so he'd gotten more crowded and more still that last week or so and suddenly there was so much movement in between contractions so I don't know if it was maybe then that he was moving into a wrong position a breach position I woke up about 1 30 in the night last night with contractions and I had contractions pretty regularly until I fell asleep on the couch at maybe I don't know five or something like that and then I slept till seven and woke up feeling really discouraged because I wasn't having anything so I took a shower and then they picked up again and I'm just really tired and cold and having contractions so laying down so I had an appointment anyway with one of my midwives this morning at 10 so she should be here soon and we'll just see how things progress I'm drinking a hot cup of my raspberry nettle tea um, that's warming me up so that feels a lot better and yeah my contractions are just deep feeling so I would be really surprised if we don't have a baby today. She comes and um, we do the normal, you know, blood pressure, whatever, check the baby. And at that point is when she was like, uh, she was feeling a little bit concerned because his heartbeat. She kept checking the heart. She, yeah. she grabbed multiple Dopplers. Because it was normally right here and it seemed like we were hearing it up here. And we're like, wait a second. Right. And but then it's like it kept having contractions and we waited a little bit. I went to the bathroom, it seemed like it shifted down again. Right. So we started having this discussion about <laughs> should we go in for a quick ultrasound at the local place? And I was kind of I was like frustrated a little bit because I was it's kinda of, it would have been a decent disruption. Mm -hmm. If things would have progressed, it would have been well, a it would problem. have bad, been bad. I probably would have delivered in the ultrasound clinic looking back, but of yeah. we didn't Well, know that right. Then. And so so the so I was like <laughs> So I kept pushing. I'm like, okay, so if what you're saying, like if we know, what are we going to do about it? You know, I kept pushing. I'm like, okay, so what's this change? Right. So we were talking that through because it's like, well, maybe we would labor in a different position or, or, you know, if he's really in a bad spot, it might end up a C-section. A C-section. I don't right. know. So while we were thinking that through. Well, I actually. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just so, jump in anytime. Yeah. Right. Well, pause. So. I got real frustrated with the idea of a C-section, and um, it's a very closed-minded way to, to view things. I, ha I have to admit that. I understand that. Um, because, we had, because we've had such great success with the home births, mm -hmm. I was um, disappointed at the idea that this could go into a C-section for several reasons and uh, not that you know c-sections are bad or, or whatever it's not what i felt like we were called to or what i wanted and um and then like god came in and and it was like it was just what i needed at the moment not even that it was substantial otherwise but he basically gave me the thought or the feeling is that well what if um someone needs to meet you or know or like watch you guys in the middle of this that wouldn't get to see you if you were at home and so then I was just at peace and I'm like alright 
whatever God wants to do in this situation is fine. I clearly don't want to do the C-section. Yeah, I didn't either. So I gave a little bit of a resistance, but then I just kind of like backed off and I'm just like, okay, Right. Whatever, whatever happen. the best, whatever the best thing is. You want to do the ultrasound? Do the ultrasound. Yeah. But I gave it. I think. C section is the absolute bottom on my list. Obviously, I, I just can't even imagine the recovery from that. That would be hard. That would be hard. But we didn't have to decide because um, while I was chatting with her and and she had another appointment after me, but she decided to cancel that and just stay with me. And thankfully, because things progress so fast, but she was kind of like, you know, I'm just going to set things up here and we'll just kind of wait and see what happens. Well, I was not having super strong contractions, but I was sat cross-legged on the bed and I had one contraction at like 1130. So it had been an hour of, you know, thinking things through at this point. And all of a sudden my water broke. I was so shocked. She said, I've never seen a pregnant lady jump this fast because I leaped <laughs> off the bed in that moment and I have never had an experience like this before. It was like, I felt like five gallon buckets of fluid were coming out. I mean, it was so much fluid and I'm realizing now that there was no head. Usually when your water breaks, the head will descend and it'll kind of... Are we like... Plug the you hole, already right? said You already told them that. Yeah, yeah, I did. Thing. So, um, in hindsight, I'm like, oh, that's why I lost so much fluid because there wasn't any of that stopping. It was like literally all of it. Yep. So after my water broke, I felt great. I was just like... <laughs> She's I could, like, oh, I'm not in labor. No, this is I great. Felt, I mean, obviously, you know, you know that you're there, but I, my contraction stopped and I physically just was like, oh, I feel so good. Sure enough. Brought to you live at the birth. Things are progressing fast. At first we heard the heartbeat in a weird spot and we were like, oh no, the baby turned badly. But then shifted I don't know all of a sudden my water broke in a contraction and it was like a bucket gushing out so now we are pausing and waiting because it I think when my water broke it felt such relief and um, my but my contractions like stop which is fine for a minute a ben Benjamin just showed up so oh. my midwife is setting things up I don't know if I'm I guess we're gonna set the pool up and it's at the pool up. Bella's been helping out. Kids are just hanging out in the uh -huh. other room. <laughs> feeling like, what do we do here? I'm sure they're feeling. You can put them inside the. So they move to the um, rocker out. I feel so much better after that water broke. I was feeling really bad. <laughs> really bad. Like tight pressure. As soon as that happened, I feel like. Right now I feel great. Barb is about 50 minutes out. Okay, my, my, my other midwife. Yes. So, they just scooted the chair over, or the, uh, Watch out, we what is that thing called? Right, the crib over. To set up some supplies and things. Roughness. So, as it goes on, I feel fine. I'm like chatting with her. Time is passing. And I was like, I'm having mild contractions, but nothing major. And I was like, you know, I was up a lot last night. I think I'll just lay down and take a rest here. Um, and so I did. And she was like, well, I'm going to go out to my car and get some more things. So Jason was here with me. It was just the two of us. And I was like, I'm just going to lay down here and take a rest. Well, I had one contraction. And I... So the midwife... Oh my gosh. Midwife goes to... I don't know what she was she getting. She was just she going to She had to something. go get something out of her. It was probably like two minutes she was gone. Not even. Yeah. She's like walking out there to get it. Um, Gina must have been here. So she, while she was... Out, yeah, she was in the room already. No, and she... she like, yeah. Gina no, you're right. Here. It was just you and I. Okay. Everybody... He texts my sister and hey. a friend who was going to take some pictures for us. At 11:30, that my water had broke. So this was at like I don't know 12:15 or something. I've been 45 minutes. They both live a little ways away, and they both have kids that they had to try to. Okay, so nobody's here. It's just you and I. Bella went out. Yeah. So all of a sudden, I have one contraction, and I I think I screamed. It was well, so shocking. It wasn't. It was like the intense pushing sound that you make, and she was just like. So up until this point, she, you know, kind of her stance was, I'm not going to push this baby out. I'm going to let my body... Yeah, 
I didn't want to try to force it out right. like I had to do with Benjamin. Right, and I'm going to let the contractions do its work. Yeah. Which was amazing. And then all of a sudden she's like, the oh my goodness, out. the baby's coming. I could do I nothing. I have to push. So, no, or like, it, no, you were so like it was what like I wanted. It. Because seriously, he flew out and I could do nothing to stop it. Right. Nothing. And all of a sudden she's laying on the bed sideways and the baby's foot pops out. And I was, we're like, I'm like, what? She doesn't know yet. No, I didn't know um, it was a the foot. Other, I just the other foot was, was tucked up. up in, and so I pulled that foot out. And right then, our midwife, midwife runs comes in, in the door. And, yeah, she, <laughs> Bella runs yesterday, in the door. Yesterday, like, she's like, don't pull the baby out. You know, because I, I told her said. foot was, and I was like, oh, I'm pulling. I'm just, the leg was stuck in there. And she apologized yesterday. Oh. She's like, if I was rude, I was like, I'm like, hey, look, the you're kind of the boss here. And, Oh my gosh. You know. And she didn't know at that moment of running in that the foot was stuck up because he had just taken it out. So yeah. now we had two feet out. I still yeah. had no idea that, that this baby was coming out feet first. Right. I did not know. All I knew was that there was a baby coming out. So right away and they're like, over on you have knees. to stand. So and I laying, knew I had to stand. She, yeah, she was laying this way, head towards the, the top of the bed. She rolls over to like be on her hands and knees so that and essentially we could be back there for the baby. But then we stand up. We have to stand up. Well... And I mean, it was all happening so oh. fast, but I like just... And of course, uh, Marconium is coming out all oh. over, oh. and I'm like trying Everything. to catch it and like coach no. people. I'm like, hey, get me something to get so, this. And it was such... It was... It was so fast it was, it was and like so intense and so messy. 90 mile an hour from that it was. point on. And as soon as I stood up, I stood up like leaning on him and I looked down and saw two feet hanging there. And that's the moment that I realized that he was breached, breached that his, his feet first. Yeah. And I knew immediately like, this isn't right. <laughs> and I have to get this baby out as soon as possible oh. because this is a dangerous situation. So the problem is my contractions, once the feet came out with that one big contraction, they totally stopped. stopped. I yeah. had no more contractions. And so I am standing there and I'm just like, I just have to force this baby out. Like now, that's all I could think was right now, this baby has to come out. And so I just started pushing. And thankfully I had for three weeks been doing evening primrose oil, which softens the cervix. And so earlier, I didn't tell you, but my midwife had done a, um, a cervix, what do they call it? Cervical exam? I can't remember. But anyway, it, she said at that point I was dilated. And so all of these the things... Yeah, I don't even remember all the details of it, but okay. um, but I was dilated, and so, you know, all of that working together, plus the primrose oil, was what made this so possible, because I don't even know. I was, like, pushing with all my might. I, I'm trying to... The whole moment was so intense. I'm sure it was very stressful to watch, because it was just, <laughs> like, get the baby out, but how do we get the baby out kind of thing, and I just pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed, and all of a sudden, there, he was out. Yeah. But when he first came out, he was limp. He was very purple, not very limp. Not um, even purple, like almost like a purple gray. Bluish. It was so yeah. frightening. And well, like unresponsive and you know, the midwife, you know, we were talking to her yesterday and she was just like, well, he was stunned, you know, and and yeah, he just wasn't he came out wrong. He didn't yeah. take that breath. There was no movement. My understanding was like he was not alive. That's you know, really what it I did, that's For a what it second, looked like. it would have I mean, looked, he was was just limp, looked like falling me too. all over, no, yeah, no life in him at all. Yeah. Um, but she was saying, no, that's not the case. She said she saw a little bit of movement that indicated that yeah, he I, was there. I did start to see that, you know, like after it was, you know, she was rubbing on him a little bit and, and immediately. I mean, it was just like she went to work on him immediately. She did. She and I, of course, am still have the umbilical cord attaching, so I'm like trying to be She's right limited. there. She can't go anywhere. And they lay him on the bed. I'm next to him. She's just like working, working, working as fast as she yeah. can. And I was just like, please, please take a breath. That's. And, and then she starts, you know, uh, well, she was obviously massaging his back, his chest area. And then she had and the bulb. Then she had the bulb. I don't she even know if she did much of that. She just, oh, the snot sucker. Yeah, yeah. Bulb. Whatever. I'm sorry. It's a snot sucker. I don't know. What do you guys call it? Anyway, um, so. She starts, and as soon as she put that thing in his nose, that made him mad, and it was and just like. And then he took a gulp, and right and away like, you could see him. Pinking. Beautiful pink. Yeah, it was the biggest relief in the world. Yeah. It went from like the scariest moment ever to. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. The biggest relief ever, and he started crying. I was just like, oh. Okay. It was like it was, and and it like okay. in the moment, 
I'm like praying without praying, which is kind of hard to explain. Because I was just like, God, I, you know I'm hopeless here, or helpless. I, I just, I, I don't, I don't, I don't have anything outside of you. There's nothing I can do. I'm just here standing here watching it. It was an interesting place to be. It was like everybody was holding their breath along with him for that minute. It was probably only a minute, but it felt so long. So then, um, yeah, he started crying, and, and she's clearing out his throat because he had mucus, of course, and all that. And Not that much. Not too much, no. Mm. And um, so then they got me more comfortable so that I hold him, and then eventually, you know, delivered the placenta. My other midwife showed up. She made it, like, right after all of this, probably, like, five minutes after he was born when he was suddenly breathing and... Um, wow. Yeah. Um, then, you know, we waited to cut the cord and all those things and just, like, just, I don't know, just existed in the moment and tried to clean up the mess because, like I said, it was just... There was plenty of that. And... And just kept watching him. But I'm telling you, the first, like, 12 hours. So he was born at, at 12.34. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Oh and the first 12 hours, I just couldn't stop watching him. I was just so nervous because, you know, it had... Whoa! Coughing. Because it had just been so emotional. This, and is, this, this is like... He's like Silas in a sense. I'm sorry, this is so silly. I'm stuck on numbers here. So it was two, one, two, three. Yes, his birthday. One, two, three, four. It is crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. Yeah, buddy. But he um, he was still, which of course, you know, he was worn out from the birth too. And so he was just still pretty out of it for the first 12 hours. And I didn't even sleep. I just like watched him breathe, basically. Yeah. And then about midnight. I slept. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Then about midnight, he woke up, and, um, you want to eat, don't you? He woke up, and he started, like, you know, fussing to nurse and all those things that you would expect. And I just, at that point, I was like, okay, all is well. <laughs> I have a healthy baby. And it it happened. It's, I, I don't know. It was, so after, immediately after he was born, I just needed some time. The kids... The whole time the kids were in the living room, except Bella was here. So they were in the living Elsie room, popped in too. watching a show, you know, just kind of hanging out. I don't even know what they were doing. And um, <laughs> it took about an hour before they got me all cleaned up. And um, I don't know. Like, made, checked him out. Not even, no, they didn't even do the weights and stuff. They just gave me some time. So I think it was probably about an hour. And then... Um, there you go. And then all of the kids came in to see him. I don't... You know, they were kind of quiet about it. I don't know what they were thinking, too. I'm sure they saw the commotion and the running back and forth and knew that it was a... Like, this is the first... I think this is the first birth that... Mm -hmm. That they uh, were just kind of here and out there. any of them would remember outside of Bella. Yeah. When, I, when they were younger, we would they would typically go to Grandma's house. Or we labored at night. Or it was at night. Yeah. And then the last few births I all happened at night and they all slept through it except you know Bella. Right. Elsie. Elsie was at Lydia's birth. Yeah, but, she was. Um, but otherwise they just kinda slept through it all and then they woke up in the morning and there was a baby. So this was a unique experience. And it's one of those things that I also had worked through mentally while I was pregnant. It's like feeling like it I'm okay with having this baby in the daytime with the kids awake. I know it's funny to to kind of give yourself permission to do all these things because you feel like, well, it's, it'll happen when it happens. But I do think that with my last few births, I like was able to kind of delay things so that it did happen at night. You know, the body is amazing and it, it kind of knows where your heart is, I think. Oh, I thought, I thought you were gonna say stubbornness is a powerful <laughs> tool. That too. But um, this was the first one that I worked through so much in that last month before pregnancy or before birth that just that I was okay I didn't want to control things I wanted my body to do what it needed to do I wanted to be okay with whenever the baby came all of those things and it truly was a blessing that I had that surrender in me because nothing went like I thought it would but it was all okay but yeah 
but it was all perfectly the way it was supposed to be. Right. I mean, when you look at things after the fact and you sort through it in your brain, you realize, like, you know, God plans all these things. He's not surprised by anything, and he knew exactly how Sovereign. it was going to be. Yep. And, it, and it was perfect in that way, even if it wasn't like ideal. So there you have it. The kids came in, and I think they were hesitant at first, but we have seen in this last week their love for him <laughs> is like, amazing. They adore him so much. Around and wiggling. Baby. <laughs> She's like, I don't know what to do. His eyes are open. Look up. Are they really? I can't really see them. They are. You've become Tyson? Yeah. I just... Okay. Dang. Sorry, I forgot to do that. James, you want to get close and see him? Come around here. There's another brother to push around. Little Everett. What do you think? You can touch him. He's so small. So small. Well, how, how happy is Shazam? Yeah. No, yeah. we should do that. Yeah, she went to get it. Okay. Sit down and see what she picks up. All the guns. Yeah, yeah, I can't see the bottom here. Yeah. Just gonna yeah. face. Okay, yeah, you gotta make your guesses quick. Yeah. Metal. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You got a baby? You're a big brother now. I know. You got a baby doll, Oh, he won the lady. Oh, he's a little pouty face. You think, think, you were a little baby like that. He's so stinking cute. He's gorgeous. He really is. Beautiful color. Do you, are you taking pictures? No, or do you I want to hold that there? <laughs> Barely and is less hair than you do, Benny. Oh, get the blanket up here. Good job. It's so quiet when we're gentle, Benny. <laughs> Can you help Benny hold this? I'm kind of I'll hold What, Benny? Ah, at the feet. Uh, see that? Hello. Hello.